Last week, you may remember we were talking about uh, the purpose of meditation and discover who you really are, what your true nature is, and particularly as that means you're related to everything else and connected to everything else. Uh, I'd like to explore that theme a, a little more, in fact, referring to this, the same book in part. Um, from the uh, point of view of consciousness, what that feels like in terms of consciousness, the quality and range and type of consciousness that you can experience as we grow in this. And of course, we've obviously touched on some of these themes before, but it's good to go back and uh, synthesize and, and uh, deepen, you know, hopefully, our uh, appreciation of this. And as usual, I'm spurred on by uh, page a day calendar, as you know. Uh, a few week, a few uh, days ago, there was a provocative, well, they're always provocative, but this one. Uh, the uh, author looks like a Turkish name, so possibly not Christian or Buddhist, but this is what he said. Uh, the horse's mind, uh, by the way, horses have minds, I mean, it's level, I'm talking about consciousness here. The horse's mind blends so swiftly with the haze mind. <laughs> okay, so first of all, remember, and this is, this is an esoteric concept, but very scientific at the same time, uh, there's, a, there's a continuum of consciousness, remember, from what you want to call the divine or the absolute, the all-encompassing one, uh, all the way down, just to call it a condensation uh, of consciousness. Uh, even the Thomistic philosophers you know, it's, it's speak in this way, that, that a, a grain of sand or a rock is conscious uh, at its own way, at its own level. So, you know, God, angels, you know, bodhisattvas, uh, humans, uh, angels, ghosts, you know, animals, grass, sand, rocks. Being is conscious. And in fact, what we do in our growth in consciousness is become all that. We are all that, except to wake up to that. And so we get a certain consciousness, share our consciousness with a stone. What is that like? Well, I'm supposed to be finding that out. But that's what this phrase is getting at. The horse's mind, or this animal consciousness, blends so swiftly with the haze consciousness. So there's the grass consciousness. And of course, there's a humorous element to here as well, because he's talking about eating, right? Presumably the mind uh, of the horse is intent, focused on the eating, and so the, the hay and the horse become one, obviously on the level of being, of stomach and digestion. But there's a consciousness smell, there's a mind smell here as well, which is really fascinating. And which is open to us. Now, obviously, we can become one with material creation in the same way, in the way we do when we eat, you know, and the, the taste, taste uh, and touch and all of that, sight, smell, uh, is a way of, of a melding, of becoming one with, you know, sharing uh, being, sharing consciousness, awareness, uh, with, uh, with what we eat, with these things, and then of course it becomes literally one with us as the atoms become us. Become. I mean, it's, it's a reminder that we are already one, but this is one, and we become one in a very <laughs> graphic, physical way. But there's also the conscious mill, the mind mill, that, that we're talking about here. So, for example, in the koans, when it says, you know, the, the, the Buddha is the oak tree in the garden, that's the, the flowering hedge, you know, or the six pounds of flax, or whatever it might be. It's, that's a way of saying, we are one thing. You know, we and it are totally there, present, and one. So it's the oak tree's consciousness is ours on a certain level, and we, uh, we become it. And its consciousness is ours, and ours is it. Uh, and what is that like? Well, find out. But. Uh, Part of the way we do that, one of the main ways we do that, is our, a consciousness of our own body, all the elements of the earth, and again, science confirms this, all the elements of the earth and of creation, of earth, air, fire, and water, traditionally, they're all part of our body. So we have these elements already in our being as we're constituted, and we become aware of that more 
and more. Uh, uh, so much of what we experience should, uh, as we grow in awareness in our practice is our bodies become more and more aware of our bodies in the most wonderful way. I mean, when I said before, let your feet be conscious and not your mind, and you become more and more aware, our, all these elements within us are conscious, have their own consciousness. We become its consciousness. It becomes our consciousness because it is all one. And we broaden and deepen our consciousness and who we are uh, by becoming more aware of that. You know, I think a lot of times when before we practice, uh, before we begin the spiritual practice, you know, our bodies are kind of dead. We're not really aware, except, except when there's a pain or something like that. We're not even really aware of our bodies. But as we, as we practice more and more, we become radiant. You know, it's become feel more and more alive on every level of our being. More and more conscious. Our legs and our heart and our intestines become more conscious as we are their consciousness and it is their our consciousness. It's all one consciousness, one radiant awareness, one, one unity of, of consciousness. And it's, it's wonderful and it expands and, 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 and radiates. Uh, so we can become, you know, luminous luminously aware on, on every level of our being, more and more aware of that. And, you know, the whole idea of the totem, you know, we can become aware of animal consciousness because it's in us already, you know, the, the, even, the four, even the four animals in the Christian, in, in Jewish Christian uh, notion of, of the, uh, the, 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 the bull and the eagle and, and the lion. And the human. It, it's, we have all these animals within us as well. So the totem, pole, and We've discussed this before. But, uh, that's why some of the koans speak about the, the, the uh, enlightened one being a tiger roaring, uh, because uh, it is. So we become more aware of animal consciousness, dog, cat, etc., as we become more aware, more present, um, and, and, and so on, uh, the different levels of being. In fact, uh, some, some friends of mine. In, uh, one Spirit uh, Interfaith Seminary, and, and along with Andrew Harvey, have been going on pilgrimages uh, to Africa to, uh, for the, to encounter the white lions. Did you even know there were white lions? But they experienced these lofty, illuminated beings who are the white lions. And who knows exactly what's that about, what that's about, but I'm sure it's true. Wow. Kind of consciousness do they have? Are they, are they messengers from beyond? Of course they are. Everything. It's more luminous and, and, and accessible sometimes to us in, in, in some ways than others. So you know we become more and more uh, you know awake and, and, and aware. Um, and the Buddha himself, in his enlightenment, uh, expresses this. Does he not? Remember what he said. There was a morning star. I mean, there was, it's, he's kind of like aware of the whole, the morning star was part of his consciousness then. Um, and he said, as he awoke, became the Buddha, I and the great earth and all beings have simultaneously attained to the way. He was the consciousness of the whole universe, and the whole universe was his consciousness. Wow. That's what it means to wake up. You know, everything is included and everything is luminously aware and radiant. Uh, you're in it, it's, it's, it's you. So, back to uh, the unbearable wholeness of being of Leah de Leo, and you know, a number of things ex express this very well um, in, the, in some of the final pages. Uh, listen to this. Uh, when we see ourselves as part of a larger whole, we act on behalf of the whole of which we are a part. I no longer see myself as protecting the rainforest, but rather that I am part of the rainforest protecting myself. I am that part of the rainforest emerged into thinking. So the rainforest becomes conscious in you, and you become its consciousness, and its consciousness becomes yours. And who are you anyway? You're all of that. And who is it? It's you. Wow. What does that actually feel like? We'll find out. Because it's all one, it's all interconnected. And I like the way Ken Wilberg expresses this. 
He says, we do not recognize ourselves as merely strands in the web. Remember I used that image from, from Indra's net, you know, with strands on the web all interconnected, but we're not just single strands, or, or a single hair on the golden-haired lion, you know, lion. And by the way, in the commentary in the, in the Denkoroku on the Buddha's enlightenment, when he sa it says, when the Buddha said that, I am the great earth and all beings are enlightened, it says, that was the first lion's roar. Anyway, so you're not just a strand of the lion, uh, but we try to perceive reality from the perspective of the web as a whole. He says, you are doing something no mere strand ever does. You are escaping your strandedness. <laughs> That's clever. So if you only perceive yourself as a strand, you're stranded. You're lost. So you have to realize that you're transcending it and becoming one with the entire display. Okay, to be one with, be aware of the whole system shows precisely that you are not merely a strand. Uh, so that's, you know, that's very well said. Uh, Albert Einstein. A human being is part of the whole called by us universe. All right? A part limited, but one experiences oneself as something separated from the rest. If you do that, it's a kind of optical delusion, he says. Optical delusion. That's also very clever. Optical delusion of one's consciousness. Our task, he says, must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion. That's what the awareness is. Consciousness is compassion. How could it not be? Joy and gift, love. To embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. And just today in the Times, there was an article about the, the spooky, what's it called? Spooky? Uh, the spooky action whereby a particle at one end of the universe influences a particle at the other end of the universe, even though they're not within any shouting distance of each other, maybe light years apart, that shows the interconnection of the whole, how one, one resonates with the other. Uh, an experiment was just done to prove that, prove Einstein wrong, actually, poor Einstein. Uh, even he didn't quite get that. But, um, but that's, part of, that's part of what it, it, it means. Now, as you get up to the human level, in humans. We're all one another. Remember the koan, the 68th one in the Blue Cliff record that I've quoted many times before, where one monk calls to another, what's your name? And the other monk replies, the name of the other guy, not his own name. And then says, oh, I, don't, I am just my own name. And so it's it, it changeable identity, interchangeable names, and they laugh because, wow, we are, we are one. So what does it mean to take on another's consciousness, another's being? You take it on like Christ or like the Tonglen and the Tibetan Buddhist. You take on their, their pain, you take on their experience because it's yours. Just like Christ on the cross, it's your pain, you, it's, it's all one. Uh, but I found that on a deeper level, when you go deeper into the deepest consciousness of who we are and who others are, it's just this surge of luminosity and joy and peace and love and gift. Christ, if you will, in us, uh, beyond the suffering, more than the suffering, the resurrection, if you will, to use Christian terminology. And that's where we're most deeply united in consciousness on that level. Beyond and below and beyond, above, you know, the, the, the pain, the deadness, you know, the, as I was saying before, we're only aware of ourselves when we're in pain. No, we're most aware when we're beyond that, including that, beyond that, passing beyond that. And that's where, you know, she has some beautiful quotes about, about Christ himself and about, for example, the Eucharist here towards the end. Uh, so, having been embraced by God, we must make space for others in ourselves. They are, they are us. We are them. Invite them in, even our enemies, because who's, what kind of subjective judgment is that? You know, another person is, is you. Whoever you think they are, a friend or enemy. In receiving the Eucharist, each person receives the whole Christ, head and members. Often have you thought of that? Very Buddhist and very Christian. In receiving the Eucharist, each person receives the whole Christ, head and members, so that the entire body is present in each member. So when you receive Christ in the Eucharist, you're receiving everybody. We're perfectly united with one another, all members of the body. So. Their awareness, their being is yours, and yours is theirs. All in Christ. This is the Buddha's eye and the whole universe, you know, are one. 
And what's your name? My name is your name, your name is my name. And it's all Christ, it's all Buddha. So what does that feel like? Well, right now. Uh, but that's, you know, that's, that's the mystery of Christ. And, 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 and that includes the whole universe. So listen, even St. Bonaventure, who had a great sense of the great chain of being, quoted by a Franc Franciscan descendant here, Lilia de Leo, quoting St. Bonaventure. All things are said to be transformed in the transfiguration of Christ. All things become luminous, right? Just as clothes did, you know. We just said that a moment ago. There's a whole luminosity through the whole... So anyway, each creature was transfigured in Christ. As a human being, Christ has something in common with all creatures. Right? We're just talking about that. With the stone, he shares existence. With plants, he shares life. With animals, he shares sensation. With angels, he shares intelligence. Thus, all things are transformed in Christ. Since in his human nature, he embraces something of every creature in himself when he is transfigured. Well, like that? And he's always transfigured. You just have to wake up to it and see it. Always luminously alive. Yeah, and angels too. So when you get to angelic, we share that, which is just a, a higher, more inclusive, more complex, more concentrated, more luminous, more intense con oh, consciousness, which is us too. These are the great bodhisattvas. These are the great angels and archangels that we are one with. That's all part of the consciousness of Buddha, Christ, uh, of the whole. So that's, that's, you know, that's utterly fantastic. So today's page day, how providential, how synchronistic, a quote from St. Simeon, the New Theologian, which I may have used before, but we awaken, in, we awaken in Christ's body, and Christ awakens in our bodies. And my poor hand is Christ. He enters my foot. And you do kin in and every other time if you're awake. He enters my foot and is infinitely me. I don't that, infinitely me. What does that mean? Well, it means everything that I could possibly be, he is. And I am. And he's an infinite version of me, because I'm infinite, if I'm awake. I move my hand, and wonderfully, my hand becomes Christ. It becomes all of him. You remember the hologram? Even this part contains the whole. How luminously aware is your hand? Whose hand? Find out. So this is great stuff. And at the very end, um, something quote, quote from Teilhard, lest we live in our perspectives, you know, to just the great earth, or, or the planet, or the solar system, or the galaxy, why should we stop? So listen to this. Teilhard saw that evolution is larger than the scope of the human person alone, beyond the level of collective consciousness. It sounds very young, but that's what we're talking about, collective consciousness. Christ consciousness, whatever. Um, he posited a megasynthesis a convergence of interplanetary, intergalactal consciousness. And there are some who say that they've had contact with intergalactical intelligences, you know, or, or connected to us already, if we wake up to it on their wavelength. What does that feel like? Well, find out. So there's no limit here. So, who's conscious? Of what? And what does that feel like? 